we got you. What about plays on the turf? We got you covered. Or maybe even a knock right out of the park. We give you our takes on the latest sports news, music, and anything trending around the world. You are now in the clutch with Nia and Malik. What is going on, guys? We are back. Episode 15. Nia. Wow. Come on, man. Already? Right Already? Yeah. Already? Yeah. Man, that's mellow right there. We're going to. This the mellow episode, yeah. right? Mellow episode. <laughs> this is the mellow, oh, this is the mellow oh, episode. <laughs> so, you know, guys, we started a series uh, kicking it with Nia and Malik. And we just bring on guests, you know, talk whatever, whatever we want to. And, um, who are we kicking it with today, Nia? Man, today we are kicking it with Caleb Smith, host of Three Millie Productions and Podcasts, National Award nominated journalist, mm. cultural curator, mm. and recently partnered with Business Bully TV as a co-host and moderator Ooh. for Business Bully Podcast. Y'all gas me, right? How do you do it? <laughs> the goats. How the do you goats. Do it? No, for real. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to be like y'all when I grow up. For real. For real. Caleb, what's going on? Not Thank you for much. coming and kicking with real. us today. Man, thank y'all for having me. I tune in every single week. Yes. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Yes. Set up is fire. Episodes love. of fire. So yeah. keep it up. For real. That's for real. love. That's it's needed. Love. That's love. You know, we we do it vice versa. We support. We support. <laughs> thank y'all. Got to. You know, got to thank y'all. Support. Because yeah. what you have is really like a gold mine that's really going to take yeah. off and be something really big because that's you don't love. see too many black men or just too many men, period, of your age group that mm, are right. doing the things that you're doing. I appreciate dropping it. the gems that you drop. Thank you. And that actually leads into my first question for you. Um, walk us through the birth of your empire, 3 Millie Productions. All right. So before all that starts, just real quick, y'all are dope. <laughs> I love it. So professional. And hey, we gonna keep going complimenting. Nah, nah. Hey, you can't, we ain't gonna start the episode. Hey, you got a Spider Man meme. We about to start it. You, 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 you. <laughs> nah, because real quick, the fact that you know Nia and y'all already had the questions laid out, yeah. everything. Right. So yeah. right. Fire. Got but it. how um everything started was um I've been doing podcasting since I think like 2015. Wow, you know, okay. since like my freshman year um, of college, and I always enjoyed having conversations because yeah. even as a kid. I love to talk, but not talk too much. Mm -hmm. So I used to love, you know, talking to family members about their stories or about, you know, people at the barbershop will be talking for hours. So this kind of led up to how a uh, three million pod even started, because after doing podcasting at state, being over the podcast a department, I've always had like this eye for conversations being uh, recorded. Right. So then, you know, after school, I graduated. Um, I was doing uh, my internship. I loved it there. But, you know, eventually when you grow up, it's like, it's time for me to spread my wings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So me, group of my friends, we tried to start our own media platform, which we now have. And when it first started, we struggled, you know, with the name. So we were like, what are we going to call oh, ourselves boy. and all that stuff? So then <laughs> uh, Millennial Conversations. So mm -hmm. then Three Millie Pod, because at first it was just three of us. Yeah. So it started up from there. And two, I just wanted to highlight. Um, entrepreneurship which mm -hmm. was very very huge to me because seeing entrepreneurs all the time growing up and seeing black people making their own money calling you know their own shots because like what we were talking about earlier sometimes we have to change our voices mm -hmm. right. we have to change yeah. how we dress mm -hmm. how we carry ourselves mm -hmm. so that was so needed so i want to talk about entrepreneurship sports just any and every type of thing that you could possibly cover right. but of course business um as well which was huge so that's how i'm started and right now i think we're at like 35 episodes so it's been dope. really really dope That's good. That's it's good. been really, really dope. dope really dope thank y'all and you inspired me um to start mine start my wow. little small media That's company nah, so not small hey, <laughs> it's, nah. no, it's gonna get there yeah, not it's definitely small. gonna grow speak that into existence yeah yep. for sure it's definitely gonna grow because you know the long-term goal is to own my own production company it's happening so, it's you happening. know and i'm glad that we did have that conversation earlier just talking about how you know at one point when i first got in the business i thought well, I have to talk a certain way. Yep, and I can't yeah. wear my hair like right. this. Yeah. I can't. I can't tweet this. Mm -hmm. And I can't. I can't dress like this. I can't yep. be Nia. Right. That's it. So that's really dope that you um, see it that way because being an entrepreneur, especially now in this era, it's important. It is. Yeah. You it know, it is. It's needed. It's mm -hmm. needed because as you see with people like Nick Cannon or just whoever, yeah. as black people we have to always have like this muzzle on us. Like we can't right. talk about yep, any and right, everything. And right. even if it's true, 
it's just like shh. yeah mm-hmm. so there's another malik out there there's right. another nia another caleb uh, my man uh, behind the camera who owns this space there's another version of us out there so if we're our true authentic selves right people right. they'll see that they'll attract to that but if we're trying to switch up change our voices right how we dress it's like i know nia <laughs> <laughs> right right i know malik <laughs> man, <laughs> he ain't like that that's what i'm saying yeah. that's what i'm saying so yeah. We can be creating our own lanes and new avenues for people to make it right now during yeah, this time. True. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. needed. That's oh right. man, this motivation is needed. Oh, nah, man. I'm trying, man. Already <laughs> good combo. Oh. Oh. So I, I know it. you got something um, starting your IG. It's the Millennial Masterclass series. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just talk about that and what the impact has made so far. Yeah, uh, Millennial Masterclass series actually started from my girlfriend's idea because uh-huh. COVID happened and we were filming at the podcast studio. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And at first it was me and two other co-hosts. That didn't work out because sometimes people have disagreements on vision, all right. that stuff. So I had to go back to the drawing board. I had to figure out how can we still stay relevant? How can we produce content? Because uh-huh. right now I can't have guests come through. And COVID, this was like when it first happened. Yep. Like yeah. back in March yep. so Girl. everybody was scared and I was just scrolling on Instagram um, I was telling uh, my girlfriend Sid I was like man I don't know how we can post content and she was like you remember before you tour your um, Achilles back in December you were going on Instagram live yeah. you'll just be chopping it up with people right. mm-hmm. I was like okay and then she was like I can edit it for you and wow. she said you can screen record it because this was the time on IG when it was a screen on top of another screen mm-hmm. and there was comments on there. Right. And then even if you screen recorded, it would still be comments on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. of course, you know, when you first start something, it's not perfect. Yeah. But one episode led to another, uh-huh. led to another. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Started uh, networking more, DMing people, yeah. sending emails, interview inquiries and crossing fingers that people respond. Right. And the moment I knew that it was popping was um, Ash Cash. He's a guy. He was on um, Earn Your Leisure. Mm-hmm. And I love Earn Your Leisure. Yeah. They talk about entrepreneurship you as well. You put me on, actually. I love them. It's you fire. You put me on. It's fire, man. <laughs> Shout out to them for real. Yeah. So I saw Ash. He was on there. And he was like, yeah, I stay here um, in Atlanta. And I was like, oh, okay, bet. Uh-huh. So then, like a few weeks later, formulated uh, this email, sent it to him. He responded. We got on live. Great discussion. And then mm-hmm. from there, one person led to another to That's another crazy. so then it just started building people with send dms like i learned so much from this conversation and then i was like okay bet right. so instagram live could be a medium for people who have podcasts because yeah. at first i thought that all of us that we were screwed because y'all have a, like a beautiful setup yeah. so imagine yeah. you know somebody saying hey you can't film in there no more right right so yeah. it's like yeah. what are we gonna do next so really it just started off of me just being creative shooting a shot and biggest note is listen to the women around you because they're always oh, right please. Yes. moms please. girlfriends yes. Yes. whatever because as men sometimes yeah, yeah. it's like we have this we one got vision. tunnel vision <laughs> y'all, <laughs> do. Shout out, shout out, exactly. y'all do exactly you know, <laughs> so shout out to all black women because yes. three milli pot wouldn't be where it's at right now uh, mm-hmm. millennial master class mm-hmm. first of all that was a great question too so it wouldn't even be where it's at if people like y'all weren't tapping yeah. into yeah. it so right. much appreciated for real yeah, yeah we appreciate yeah. you thank you know, y'all because i mean i would get up every day like okay who's the next <laughs> i appreciate right. it I I'm <laughs> thank, you, thank you thank i mean you. like i said i learned a lot thank you, know? you. Thank um you. and it's crazy because you know we are now thinking like why didn't we learn about financial literacy in school man what why yeah. is that this not implemented into the education mm-hmm. system so explain the importance of education on financial literacy in the black communities man we can start off with this. I feel like we don't even look around us to start learning about it, right? Yeah. So as a kid, my grandparents worked at a factory at Wrigley's. I love gum. I chew gum all the time, but yeah. it's like because of them. So they worked at Wrigley's. We would get free gum, but they worked there for like 40 years, right? Oh, wow. And they live like vacations. Yeah. They stack their bread up. They are good. Uh-huh. And as kids, they always taught us the importance of saving money. Because my grandmother, she was a sharecropper growing up. Wow. Yeah. Um, in Commerce, Georgia. It's like in the middle of the country. Oh, yeah. And one of our family members, um, it was uh, this uh, story that was told. He was beaten by uh, the KKK. So the fact that she was able to wake up at 4 in the morning or 5 in the morning, work her butt off, then worked at a factory for 40 plus years. But now she has bread stacked up. Wow. She knows about stocks, 401k, yeah, nice. all of this. And mind you, she's a regular woman just like anybody right, else. Like yeah. Grandfather as well. My dad, he always mm-hmm. taught me, save a dollar, spend a dollar. So mm-hmm. growing up, even till this day, uh-huh. I'm going to stack my bread and I'm going all money in. Yeah. Just like what, you know, Nip, what he would say. Right. So I feel like our parents are around and we need to watch and listen because yeah. i think sometimes like we're trying to find these financial gurus mm. right. they're gonna charge you five stacks just to talk yeah. to them right yeah. so it's like first we, we need to take a step back look at malik look at nia yeah. y'all talk about it you talk to your friends because there's entrepreneurs everywhere right at church 
You might True. at church, people sleep on church. You meet so many different people at church. Yeah who are doing it. Uh -huh. So you never know who you could talk to. Uh, my guy, uh, Courtney Seals, he's a great uh, business partner with uh, Killer Mike. Okay. Cripacola, they started that. Yeah. We went to the same church. You knew me ever since I was a kid. Entrepreneur. So it's people around you every single day. Right. I would just say, ask questions. Like yeah. at the barbershop, start conversations. People need to study barbers. Barbers are barbers real entrepreneurs, are if true, you think about it. <laughs> so I feel like it's around us. And two, with podcasting, check out Earn Your Leisure. Earn your leisure. Yeah. You can check out us, uh, Dave Anderson. It's a lot of platforms. Y'all are doing big things. So I would just say you can go on YouTube. You can read books. Uh, one of my favorite books is uh, The Mindset of Success. Yeah. It's by uh, Carol S. Dweck. Weird name. But it's a really good book because she's breaking down as sometimes, like we said as men, we can have tunnel vision. Right. And we don't listen. Right. So great leaders have to listen. Uh -huh. Great leaders have to adapt. And I was reading this when I tore my Achilles back in uh, December. So I was bored. I just started right. reading books. Started reading, yeah. Find a mentor. My yeah. my mentors, uh, Dave Anderson, uh, Dr. Jacob English yeah. at Georgia State. Mm -hmm. Just find black people around you who you know are successful. Y'all yeah. know mm -hmm. if somebody's really about it. True. Right. So True. I would just say True. just approach them. Be yourself, authentic self, and just ask questions. Like drop the ego. We're all trying to learn. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. right. Yeah. That's where it starts. Day, yeah. Oof. Sure. Yeah. Caleb came in. He, he came, came in yeah, and dropped hey, hey, <laughs> We love it. it. Having a conversation, uh, man. man. Just having a conversation. Now, before you ask your question, mm -hmm. Lee, I do have to ask you this. Mm -hmm. What... Because, you know, we all basically journalists, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. What made you want to take that route? Mm. Um, because, you know, I don't see too, like I said, yeah. I don't see too many of us, you yeah. know, that want to, it's either between news and sports. That's it. Or in culture. Yeah. yeah. You know. I feel that. Yeah. Oh, man. It was actually crazy because in high school, I thought I was going to the league. <laughs> like, it was crazy. Yeah. And you know how, like, most people say that, but most people, they were like trash. But like I had the talent, I had the mindset, everything. But again, back to asking questions. Growing up, I would always be on like the morning announcements, morning news. Uh -huh. So broadcasting was always my plan because right. my dad, he didn't play that. Yeah. My mom didn't play that. Like you had to get all A's and B's, right. preferably all A's. You had to have a plan B. So went to college, uh, Reinhardt. It was a small school. Went okay. there, tore my hamstring. Uh -huh. And I was doing great in camp. I was about to get PT as a freshman, like already off the boat, like ready. Yeah. And then I think we were doing, um, it was like strength and conditioning. We were doing gashers uh -huh. and I was running and I heard a super loud pop and it sounded like Ooh. a gunshot. And I thought it was somebody behind me. I'm like, bro, what happened? And then I tried to run and I fell and I could feel just everything just moving in my wow. leg and it was torn. Dang. So I was out for like three weeks. I tried to come back early. You know how it goes, like yeah. as an yeah, athlete yeah, trying yeah, to push yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. I was doing work, like one on ones, everything, team, all that stuff. But then my leg, I could feel it afterwards where I just couldn't burst. Yeah. And I really start thinking about it. And I'm like, yo, is it really worth all this? So then the coaches, they try to make me do this uh, conditioning test like mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. I, I would have to show up at like five in the morning. I would have to show up an hour before that and get treatment. Yeah. So really at like 4 30, 5 o'clock. And I was running every single day with like a torn hamstring. I'm wow. like, bro, y'all not going to tear my body crazy. down. So I talked to my mom, my dad, girlfriend, brother. And like I told them like, y'all, I know like y'all count on me. Y'all support me. Because in high school, I was like most likely to go pro, like one that yeah. accolade, all that stuff. Yeah. First team this. But I knew my worth and I knew I was more than just a regular athlete. Mm. Yeah. So at the time, they had this thing at Reinhardt called um, Eagle TV. And that was for broadcasting students. Okay. I couldn't do it because of football. And I yeah. had practice at that time. Yeah. So then I started thinking about it. And I'm like, I can't play football forever. So I took a big gamble on myself. Mm -hmm. Talked to the coaches, man to man, eye to eye. Told right. them, yo, I'm done. I appreciate you know the opportunity. But the way that my hamstring is set up right now. <laughs> and yeah. I can't keep pushing my body to this point. Because eventually it will give out. Right. And if I already had this as a freshman coming in. And y'all are still trying to push me. Yeah. Like I get it. But. I don't get it at the same time. Yeah. So I stepped away from the game, prayed on it for like a week, did broadcasting there. One thing led to another. Then I was doing all the interviews on uh -huh. campus. People started watching it. And then I thought about state, transferred to um, Georgia State because I already knew about CNN, internships, yeah, right. all that stuff. So then one thing led to another. Wow. And that's how it happened. It's crazy. That's it's crazy. Sad. We yeah. we're talking. To, uh, remember, like when we first started, we were talking to Jared Johnston. Mm -hmm. He basically had the same thing. Wow. Like, quarterback got hurt yeah yeah, yeah. And it I was saw more interview. like him like yeah. he didn't he didn't have a plan b so mm, that's yeah. where he started to form his plan b and yeah. then right then now he's trying to help people 
respond to their plan right. because they're doing other stuff. So right. that's that great. Was dope. Yeah. That's great. And Thank I you, think man. even as athletes, you know, going all these years, you know, we're told uh, ball is life, ball is life, mm-hmm. ball is life. Mm-hmm. You know, just like that's how you real. said you didn't have time to do that. Nope. Mm-hmm. If I didn't play, if I play my, if I did play my senior year, I would not be sitting here with you guys today. Ain't that something? Isn't that crazy? Another right. athlete who didn't make it. Right. You feel me? And it just stops right there. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how at one point you think like this is life like I in order for me to be successful I need to make it professional mm-hmm. and all this other stuff because my entire life it's been about right. this game uh-huh. I don't know anything Ain't else something? and yeah. nobody has told me what I can do right That's what and I'm it's saying. crazy two years after I stopped playing basketball on the collegiate level now because I've played my entire talk life you know i played my entire life and i didn't know who the hell i was i didn't yeah. know what i wanted to Big do I, I knew I, I knew what i wanted to do right. it's always been broadcasting right. but mm-hmm. i didn't know how to get in there yeah yep. so shout out to cecil thank you cecil yeah shout out to cecil shout out to cecil yeah, yeah, for yeah for not real. For real. <laughs> shout out to you cecil but no i mean i just i didn't know i was going in my senior year of college i'm like mm-hmm. yo like what am i gonna yeah. do without this sport i've literally played since i was four years Whole old life. You know, yeah. so nobody told me what else I could do. Right. And to this day, here we are in 2020. I'm still trying to find myself and still mm. trying to figure out what's my niche and finding my niche. But that's beautiful that you have found your niche because you're really yeah. good at it. Thank you. You know, likewise. Yeah. And two, I'll say this for Nia, Malik, although y'all may feel like I'm not where I want to be. Look right. at where or where you guys are at right now yeah. in this moment in time. Right. Like Nia, Malik, y'all have it together. So right. don't ever get like lost in the sauce where you start comparing and stuff yeah. Yeah. because yeah. there's those people who didn't make it and they don't even know who they are yeah mm-hmm. right. so if we're here in 2020 just think about where we'll be in 2021 mm-hmm. 2022 so just one day at a time i really. think one big thing i've learned uh from my therapist like it's like you said we I'll always had that quick, one though. black man going to therapy hey, respect. Yeah, yeah i'm trying to get yeah. there <laughs> yeah i would love it yeah i would love it yeah yeah Therapy's but she amazing. talked about how it's just like yeah. you know you have always had that one big goal right mm-hmm. and she's like okay you got that one big goal okay what's next after that it's like and i was like dang you right like okay once i get once i get to where what's i want to be is that it like what's i still next? got so much more to so live for life. like mm-hmm. and you don't even know it yeah and we're just focused on one thing and two even if you look at um i remember it was this show um america's game it used to come on mm-hmm. nfl network mm-hmm. and they used to cover nfl teams their super bowl journeys yep, I and i remember brett Favre said something that hit me and i was a kid 1996 packers win um, I think they were in New Orleans, won the Super Bowl. And he was like, after I won, I felt empty because I'm like, yeah. what's next? Right. Because he was like, mm-hmm. throughout the whole playoff run, it's like, okay, we just beat San Fran, now on to Philly. Yep. We just beat Philly, now on to New England in mm-hmm. the Super Bowl. But then once that's done, what's next? Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what happens, in my own opinion, when you do it for yourself. Yeah. Because you just wanted that accomplishment. Right. But if you're doing it to to, to add value, to inspire people, mm-hmm. then it's like, it's I got to find something else. But if you just focus on that one goal, and then once you get it, like yeah. if, if you focus on making a meal, like before you die, once you make it, it's going to be like, okay. Yeah, man. I got it now. <laughs> Like, you see what, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. if if you're thinking once I make this, I want to create jobs, I want to mm-hmm. create wealth. Yeah. Then that's a new challenge almost every single day. Right. So right. yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Man. It's crazy. Dropping <laughs> gems. Dropping gems. Yeah. <laughs> oh I man. It. So you know we got a lot going on right now Facts. in the black community. It's, yes, sir. It's, I mean it's been going on even before all this this year. But um, just talk about like how can we address the financial literacy gap or bunk African Americans. Mm. I think, and first off, that's a very good question because people don't even ask those questions, first mm-hmm. off. But I think it's very complex. Just like what Nia was saying, how she watches Earn Your Leisure. Yeah. Like, you can watch podcasts and you can watch conversations and it's that simple. And two, another thing is we have to stop relying on the public school system to mm-hmm. teach us. That's where we yeah, fail. That, that's, yeah. that's it right there. That's where we fail. Because yes. I think as black people, we trust I don't want to say all white people, but we trust white people in powerful places too much. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we think that they'll have their best interests at heart for us, which is not true. Right. Because for a sense of surviving, it doesn't make sense anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to, to finances, we need to start teaching that young. I feel like parents don't want to tell kids how much they make. Mm-hmm. They don't want to tell them how to budget. But then when you turn 18 or when you want to get your first place, you don't have a credit score yet. Right. You don't have any of these things because they don't want to tell you all this because they want it for you to still be a kid. Right. Yeah. Not thinking 
that should be part of being a kid just like how you're going to school to learn how to find x right you know what i mean yeah. you should be learning how to build your credit scores mm -hmm. how to start a business i feel like entrepreneurship needs to be taught right. in our schools especially i think um as early as about fourth grade because you can't rely on a nine to five to constantly mm -hmm. uphold you mm -hmm. i work i know everybody works right but at the same time you have to still have a vision for yourself if this doesn't if COVID happens what am i gonna do right or if this happens what right. am i gonna do or like nia what you're doing doing a podcast and starting your own production company right. malik doing your own thing right. so it's like everybody needs to have something going on for right. themselves because that can be something that can create the the next amazon next apple so all of us have potential and two it's like if you can get a job at a nine to five you can create your own because apparently they saw something in you right so all of us have that potential it's just we have to especially in our communities we have to think about ownership uh powernomics is a great book that i really want to read that's going to be on my task but uh dr claude anderson he wrote mm -hmm. that book he's a genius and he says that the only equity that we own as black people is sweat wow. and when you think about it we're always the ones that's playing the sports. True. We're always the ones that's doing the singing and the dancing yeah. and the acting. But who's the booking manager? Mm. Right. Who owns the publishing? Mm -hmm. Who owns the studio? Who owns the record label? That's true. And it's either a Jewish or an old white man. Yeah. Wow. And that's not anti-Semitic. Right. That's just a fact. Yeah. So we just have to look at that. Like when I watch um, NFL games, when you see the Cowboys, you have a literal racist running this organization right. and he has black players playing uh -huh. on a field. Uh -huh. Just think about that playing on That's a field and he's called the owner. owner. Yeah. Mm. And we don't even have black head coaches in the league like that. Yeah. So <laughs> we got to start looking at ownership. And our problem is we want to be in the limelight too much. Really? Right. Mm -hmm. Cause really where all the power off. is man. And real quick too. Um, if you guys ever get the chance, watch uh, the black Godfather on Netflix. Okay. Clarence Avant is one of the greatest black businessmen who ever lived. Mm -hmm. He helped Hank Aaron make his money, yeah. Andrew Young, all these people. But he said life is about numbers and he was showing how it's more power being behind the scenes. Most people don't even know who he is, but mm. he put on Quincy Jones, yeah. Michael Ooh. Jackson. He saved soul train. Yeah. Wow. But you don't even know who he is. Yeah. And we got to start understanding that's where the real power is, yeah. is behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But I think because our people have been deprived of so much, we want to show you who we are. Yeah. Or we want to walk around with the biggest chain, yeah. right. nicest car. Right. And I realize yeah. that billionaire or that millionaire, he drives a regular car. Right. He wears the same clothes Low every key. day. I mean, I even I even start practicing wearing black tees all the time because yeah. it keeps everything simple. Simple. Like mm -hmm. if you think about Steve Jobs, that's how he was. And two, um, it's a thing called a decision fatigue. Like that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning and it's like you have to think about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, yeah. who you're going to talk to. Most millionaires and successful people already have everything planned out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wear that white tee today or I'm going to wear that really? black tee today. I'm wearing this hat. These shoes already planned out. So then I'm starting my day not stressed out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like we're trying to think of how can I flex on you? How, right. how can I flex on Malik? Yeah, yeah. True. I got to get this challenger, although I can't even afford it. Wow. But yeah. I'm going to post it on Instagram, though. Mm, so man. we just got to get better with our habits. And two, in game, like just ask yourself what's really important. Yeah. And that's why I think studying people like Nip is important. Um, Ash Cash is a legend like if y'all even email him like he will email you back but he breaks down uh financial literacy he has mm -hmm. a book called um hustle nomics it's fire where he talks about nip mm -hmm. how to break that down and even i mean study nip all money in which is people think he was just saying that but that's a fact like yeah everything that you make use it towards something like yeah, everything that you make use it towards that company that camera mm -hmm. that laptop malik same thing and as you see you're gonna flip that money and then True. from there and then last True. point our drug dealers need to become entrepreneurs because you're running a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> Thanks. You, really are. No, real. you have great entrepreneurial skills. Yeah. You know how to do uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. You know how to go through language barriers with people who speak Spanish mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. they're getting coke. Like People don't think about that. Like right. On the show uh, Snowfall, I love that show. Yes. Think about it. Buddy was young going to Columbia, getting yep. dope. And then flipping it and knowing how to talk to somebody who has a gun pointed at them. Right. Going to the CIA, knowing how to talk to them, yeah. getting dope from them. Yeah. Knowing <laughs> knowing how to keep up with money before Wells Fargo has an app. Right. We're talking about in the eighties yeah. where he has to call the bank and check, all right, I got five million a day. Okay, I'm gonna use that for this. Imagine if you ran a business, man. A legit business. Wow. That you didn't have to go to prison for. <laughs> you feel me? But <laughs> we throw away our brightest mind sometimes not realizing that so-and-so he became a dope boy because he realized his worth why would i work a nine to five when i can make that in a day True. he's just making a business decision yeah. 
but we got to provide jobs like as you see in media nia i promise you 15 years from now 10 years from now probably five you'll be having employees you're providing jobs that's yeah. y'all with the podcast you'll be providing Provide. jobs mm -hmm. so that's what we have to think about is do it for somebody other than other just than us, us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it comes down to that Dang. that's real Dang. Yep. <laughs> gotta walk out real quick <laughs> man well well <laughs> well well nah hey i appreciate you came in and preached today yeah. i'm sitting here in fire and i'm telling you because you know you made a really good point earlier just saying like how we as black people you know we want to be in front i know at one mm -hmm. point i'm like oh i want to be the next carry champion i want to be the next jamel Facts. hill mm -hmm. i want to be on the front of the camera Facts. and stuff like that but you know i i was telling you um before we actually got on and i was just like I went through those two internships, you know, in the news business, because mm -hmm. at one point I wanted, you know, start to do local sports mm -hmm. reporting and then work my way up to be on ESPN yeah. or a major network. And then it took for me to have those two experiences at a small market and a large market to realize this ain't it. Yeah, yeah. like, bro, this is whack. Man. This yeah. is yeah. not yeah. it. Yeah. I'm not getting paid much. Mm. I have to. And I'm not knocking anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right. You're just talking about for yourself. For, for yeah. myself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. Nah. I and it, it took me to realize like girl like you can do whatever you want to do right Facts. yeah and I didn't even appreciate the beauty of production mm. until I started creating my own content and mm -hmm. I'm like yo like it's fun, it's fun. Yeah. I enjoy it like the other night I was up to six o'clock in the morning creating a video but enjoying it though yeah loved it but if Every you were staying up till six for channel 11 type in a new script you'll be like bro this is lame. this is not that it you gotta bend the edges nah. and just make it. sure you don't say this this see, or that. that's what I'm saying yeah, it's you not know? you and see look I'm telling y'all and for um, everybody that's tuned in Think about this. Although it will will have those hard moments where yeah. it's like, man, this is tough. Yeah. Know that we have to do this because for the next line, it'll be easier. Mm -hmm. Because for us, like we said at State, we go in, there's there's no Malik. There's mm -hmm. no Nia. There's okay. no Caleb where somebody's showing us, yo, you don't have to do hard news. Yeah. You could talk about culture. You could mm -hmm. talk about sports. You could talk about business and you can dress how you want to dress and as you see what does everybody want now a podcast yeah. what does everybody right. want now their own platforms so right. now we see the people that's on the channel 2 channel 11 trying to come in our lane now uh -huh. why because it's more lucrative like yep. um who's my man i can't think of his name right now joe rogan okay uh -huh. oh, signed yeah. a hundred million yeah. dollar deal yeah mm -hmm. uh -huh. a hundred yep. million for yep. a podcast for a podcast joe budden he started this trend making i think five seven yeah and then uh gilly and wallow they got one for like three mil mm -hmm. so think about it podcasting is where it's at creating your own production company right. is where yep. it's at because you own that right mm -hmm. as you see with carrie champion espn chewed her out yes. spat her yeah. out jamel yeah. hill same thing yeah now Stephen a now. he done been spanked a few times of course yes. so know that it's just like playing sports you're just there until they don't need you anymore right yeah so yeah. it's always best to create your own platform mm -hmm. i promise you, know. you. yeah amen no yep. thank you for the inspiration but yourself. now i appreciate yes. y'all <clears throat> Um, so going on into some sports talk last mm -hmm. week, the Washington football team hired its first, uh, black president in NFL history. Yeah. Not to mention NFL has been around for a hundred years. Too long. Why is it now that things are being brought to light and corporations are being held accountable? Mm. Deserving and qualified African Americans are finally landing the roles that should have happened a long time ago. Do That's you feel like it's genuine or companies are doing this to not look so racist? We already know what it is. Okay. Yeah, All right. We already know what it is. <laughs> you know I gotta ask. <laughs> because I mean, think about this. We have a franchise called the Washington Redskins, or formerly known as. Yeah. And Dan Snyder, he never wanted to change it. So mm -hmm. that shows you everything that you want to know right, right. there. Mm -hmm. And then it's like step two. Um, Lewis Riddick, he should have been hired a long time ago. Yeah. Like, if John Gruden got a job because of his football knowledge yeah. on Monday Night Football, True. then how come Lewis Riddick, he's never been in anybody's mm -hmm. front office? Mm -hmm. And then as well, it's like, no knock on Buddy. Respect. But what exactly does a football president do? Like, is he the GM? Mm -hmm. right. He's not the owner. Yeah. Right. right. So is he really going to call any shots uh -huh. or he's mm -hmm. just going to be a face? Uh -huh. No disrespect to him. Uh -huh. I'm just saying for his role, I've never heard of a football president. Usually yeah. the president is either the owner or, or the GM. GM. Yeah, GM. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So he yeah. could be the GM. He could yeah. be. But I don't know. Like it's 2020 and we're still talking about first black this. But that's my there. point. <laughs> yeah. In the words of Dr. Claude Anderson, again, the only thing that we own is sweat. Because uh -huh. how is it that we're talking about a, a predominantly black lead from top to bottom? 
Yeah. And you just now got a black person in the ownership position. Right. It's all by design. It's mm-hmm. all by design. Mm-hmm. I mean, Doug Williams, he should have been in that role. Because mm-hmm. I think he still works for the front office, maybe. Mm-hmm. Or he probably got fired when yeah, everybody got fired got, with, yeah. with Gruden. But you got somebody like Doug who was there pretty much um, ever since he retired. And he never got that oh, spot. He's, he got you a Super Bowl. Yeah. So I think it's all just a safe face, as yeah. we already That's know. Of course. Is. And... I'm not saying boycott of the NFL because I watch it, but we have to start teaching our kids. Your plan B, if you love football so much, is to be try to get into head coaching. But I'll say forget that because you can get fired. Try uh-huh. to get into being a GM, yeah. right, or a front office. Yeah. Just think about ownership because if you're constantly wanting to be in front of the cameras, yeah, they can take it away from you yeah. at any time, real quick, yep. any time. Yep. yep, yep, yep. It's all up here, y'all. Mm-hmm. That's for real. So in 2000, not last year, basically, uh, Toronto Raptors president, Masai Ujiri, you know, he was involved in that mm-hmm. incident with the police officer. Um, but the footage was released last week yeah. showing that the officer was the one that, you know, attacked him first. Terrible. So what are your thoughts on that? And why is it so hard for you to think for what do you think? Like, why is it so hard for the police officers to take accountability for what they're doing now? Because they're doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Mm. That's what we don't talk about. Like. <laughs> Nee, I saw you in the protest. That was fire. Like, people have to understand we have to do things like that because it's necessary. And two, we have to think about we cannot appeal to, uh, I wouldn't say all, but to a certain group of people's conscious who don't have a conscious. Yeah. Like, we can't expect for people or this entity to to really care Uh because we're talking about the police department, which came from slave catching. Like, they're doing their job. It's to patrol us. And to make sure that we're staying in line and that we're being good black folk. Uh-huh. So anytime that these things happen, it's a white officer doing what a white officer is is supposed to do. And <laughs> there's still good officers out there. Don't get me wrong. It's just we have to not be surprised anymore. True. Because if True. if I constantly came up in here and stole y'all's equipment or messed up this this beautiful studio at least once a week for 400 years, y'all would be like, bro, he's a thief. Yeah. He caused yeah. problems. Yeah. yeah. If I kept doing it and one of your friends saw us hanging out, they'll be like, bro, why are you What's trying to that? be cool with it? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Like, don't you know what he's done? Yeah. And that's what we have to think about with uh, police officers, with the government. We just have to, and I'm not saying cause riots or any of that, but we just have to be careful and know that it doesn't matter how much money that we make. It doesn't matter what our title is. Mm-hmm. They do not care. They don't care. And no. I promise you that that cop knew who he was. Yeah, of man. course. Yeah. Masai is one of the most popular Probably GMs in the league. Yeah. 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 So come on now. But. Again, it just shows that you're still black. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What What does uh, Kunye say? Yeah. He's still a jigger in the coop. Man, <laughs> that's how it goes. That's how Mm-mm. it goes. I'm telling you. Mm-mm-mm. Now, why do you think, uh, because I just read that Colin Kaepernick still is not being picked up by a team. Mm-hmm. And um, we talked about this earlier, uh, Roger Goodell just saying that he wishes he could do more. Wishes, or, but he's the commissioner. You know, yeah. that he wish he could, you yeah. know, just why <coughs> is it so hard for people to take accountability for their actions? If you were just racist in that moment, like, just, just be say real it. about yeah. it. Just say it. Stop mm-hmm. beating around the bush. But why is it that Ka- Colin Kaepernick, the only thing this man wants to do is play football? Simple. You know? Simple. I just want to throw the rock. Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> it. that's it. That's, that's it. it. Mm, mm, mm. yeah it's it's a term called uh white fragility mm-hmm. and um it's a great book too check that out um as well it was a great book but it breaks down how racist white people can't look at themselves in the mirror because if they do they know like yo i'm tripping yeah or i'm crazy or what i'm doing is inhumane uh-huh. so they have to constantly ignore it so by saying i wish it's him showing fake like accountability like i'm trying to act like i care but right. he doesn't because okay. You have the power, but you aren't using that white privilege yeah. to leverage power for black people. Right. Because you could have just signed him or you could have gave him a role or one of those president roles at yeah. the NFL right. front office. Yeah. Right. There's so many different things that he could have done. So he can't say that he wishes like, bro, you literally blackballed somebody right. and said that you weren't doing it while it was, mm-hmm. happening. Yeah, it was happening. And then after it happened, he was like, all right, I did. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. So And it took know. till what, twenty twenty for everyone to admit that. Yeah. You know, he so got yeah. black balls back years? in four years. Yeah. It had to take for a black man to get killed mm-hmm. by a police officer who was kneeling on his neck. Uh-huh. Which is very weird. When right. You think about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but hey, they always say what goes around must come back right. around. And 
the thing is, is that you you could have went all these years thinking that you got away for doing Colin Kaepernick that way. But you're not. But you're yeah. not. You're not because just being real, NFL probably won't happen this year. I've been saying that for a while because so? too many players, too much traveling. And lot, yeah. they're trying to say that the 11 positive tests that came back, they went back and uh, recanted on that and mm-hmm. said that it was like a lab issue. Yeah, the right. false positives or what's yeah, false negatives or something like that. How convenient. Yeah. So I feel like that is, you can call it the ancestors, you can say God, you can say nature, uh-huh. getting his way right now because they're about to lose a lot of money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, But Cap, at the end of the day, I wouldn't even want to play for the league. No, mm-hmm. not at all. It's pointless because right now I'm bigger than football. Yes. I'm bigger than football. Yes. I don't want to give first take, undisputed something to talk about. If I throw one incomplete pass yeah. right. or, if, or if I throw one pick or one mistake, they're going to blow it up and say, see, I told you he was washed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. It's pointless. And two, it's part of, his sacrifice. Yeah. So he'll be fine. As we know, Cap, he's still making his money. So right. shout out sure to him. Right, 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 <laughs> he right, got fine. that check. Right. right. <laughs> and then two, I love this because it shows that some things are bigger than football. Some uh-huh. things are bigger than basketball. Uh-huh. So is it really that important to go back on another owner's roster who probably blackballed you? Yeah. And he doesn't even want you there. He just wants you for ticket sales. Uh-huh. And it's like, do I yeah. want to fall for that again? Nah, I'm good. So you'll be good. He'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. yeah, I know when you talked about when we talked about early, like you know, we like to be in the light, but we don't ever think about you know what about being that owner. What I feel yeah. like Cap, he was like, okay, I don't really need this football thing. Mm. Let me he just signed a deal with uh Nike. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah, like Nike. I'm Disney. straight. Yeah, you don't need that. And yeah. would he have signed that if he was still playing football? Mm. Maybe not. Yeah, you true. know. So he'll be good. And then two, another thing is Cap was never bad. When people say, oh, he fell off. That last year he had 16 touchdowns yeah, and four picks. And, and he had a 90 QBR. Yeah. And Kirk Cousins had something lower than that. He got paid. Mm-hmm. So True. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> True. I don't want to hear True. none of that. True. It just True. it shows you how they can change narratives overnight. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And make you to be something who you aren't. Yeah. And again, it's people not wanting to look at themselves in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you keep listening to that to that lie that that sounds so good. Mm-hmm. So it's like if if I can say that he's trash, then I can justify me not signing him. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. It was crazy. Feels like the same thing with Cam too. With Cam, that's my guy. Like the same yeah. Thing so again, when we see this with black quarterbacks, mm-hmm. really, because Kirk Cousins, he still gets a shot every year, and he's terrible. Terrible. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we can just keep going down the list, yeah. like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. yeah uh huh. Like all these guys all are these terrible. Heads, yeah. Um, what's my guy's last name? Is Moore? Matt Moore is still in the league. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, Matt Moore. Yeah. I mean, how? I'm like, <laughs> but y'all said that Cam can't be in the league. Like, do you know how crazy that sounds to say he's Cam is young. a second or third string quarterback? Yeah, it, that don't make sense. But it's only with us, and they use our athletic abilities against us. Oh, yeah. he runs too much. Mm-hmm. But then if Josh Allen starts running or Aaron Rodgers. Oh, he's so athletic. Oh, he runs now? He can do it all. <sighs> it's crazy. Sports is crazy sometimes, man. I tell oh, for you. Real. Hypocrisy at its finest. <laughs> oh, so I know recently, you know, you've seen all the uh, high school athletes there trying to get into HBCUs now, I not going it. to those other colleges. How important is that for our culture? Mm-hmm. Great question. Y'all ask great questions, by the way. <laughs> HBCUs are so needed, man, because yeah. I grew up around them. Like, my brother, he went to FAMU. I okay. used to love going to FAM mm-hmm. to, like, drop off his stuff. Like, yeah. I used to love just go over yeah. there. <laughs> like, you see all the people walking right. around. You see the sororities, mm-hmm. the frats, the football players, uh, Morehouse Homecoming, of course, and yeah. Spelman. So being exposed to that growing up and people who went there and seeing them become, you know, successful people, I always thought about, well, hey, if we look at the history, right, most of our five-star athletes back in the 70s and in, in the 60s and some in the 80s were going to these HBCUs. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. This is a true story. Bear Bryant in Alabama start losing to teams that start getting black players. Uh-huh. And they said he was an avid racist. So most black Alabama fans uh-huh. know your history about Alabama <laughs> and Ole Miss, too, and Georgia. But he was losing and... He, they pretty much said we need to go sign some N words. Yeah, yeah. And they went and did that, and then Alabama became Alabama uh-huh. again. Yeah. That shows you our power that they took us from HBCUs to these major D1 schools. And it shows you that if we go back to those HBCUs, uh-huh. think about how much money that would generate for those Oof. schools. Morehouse, yeah. by the way, whoever's running the money at Morehouse needs to needs to go. Gotta but go. <laughs> but the, the fact that Morehouse has to constantly ask for money mm-hmm. and their endowment, I think, is 47K a year yes. or Spelman has to ask for money or schools like Clark. Like, I love Clark. Yeah. Uh, one of my mentors, he actually stays here on a snap finger roll. So shout out to y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Street. He was uh, my professor at State. And now he's over the media department at Clark. Mm-hmm. We used to go to Clark like every other weekend. Check it out. Media department. There are conditions that they had to deal with 
was so bad compared to a school like Georgia State. But they had music journalism, unlike Georgia State. They had hip hop journalism. Mm -hmm. So HBCUs have the programs. It's just the funding, the funding. isn't there. Yeah. And our talent pool, even in, in, in journalism and media, needs to be going to uh -huh. HBCUs because then you can bring attention to those schools, you can bring resources. But our problem is sometimes we feel like if we're around white people, then we made it. Yeah. And we have to throw that out the window and realize that we can flip those economics overnight. Like imagine if, Nia, you went to an HBCU. So okay, imagine yeah. if five-star athletes who were going to schools like UConn or Tennessee mm -hmm. were going to Alabama State. Mm -hmm. That's big. Mm -hmm. It would change. Mm -hmm. So it takes people like Mikey, uh, Mikey Williams, yeah, you know, true, saying that. True. And yeah. As y'all saw, he's getting all that flack now. So yeah. it takes people standing up and saying, yo, instead of me going to uh, UGA, I want to go to Morehouse. Or yeah. instead of me going to Alabama, I, I want to go to Howard or right. Alabama State. It takes that one person one who person? has to make a sacrifice, mm -hmm. but it can all change overnight. It yeah. can. Yeah. Hey, we can turn this thing around. Facts, facts. Um, how can the African-American community <clears throat> move forward and progress to make our own communities better and create build mm. fix mm -hmm. so that we don't have to deal with what we've dealt with for over the past 400 plus years of mistreatment it's been a long time <laughs> i feel like we got to stop listening to the news watch the news i'm not saying don't watch the news yeah. everybody that's tuning in but take from it what you can get right mm -hmm. and know because if we watch the news I'll be like Nia, all black women just twerking out here. So right. I'll be like Malik, all right. black dudes just out here scamming yeah, right. or, or, or flipping dope. Yeah. Right. And all we do is kill each other. Mm -hmm. Some of that is true, but most of it isn't. Yeah. Like even right now, think about what y'all are currently doing with this platform. Mm -hmm. Like most people don't talk about there's so many black people getting into podcasts and entrepreneurship, yeah. building companies. So if we just look around us mm -hmm. and we start understanding our value and two, we don't know our history. That's where we Oof. keep messing up. Like. Yeah. Georgia State used to make me so mad because um, at the Honors College, I was in the Honors College all throughout Georgia State. I worked there. Uh -huh. I did their media there. And I will always be the only black person. Uh -huh. My mentor there, uh, Dr. Jacob English, my guy, shout out to you. He actually had me um, work for him. And mind you, this is when I first transferred. And again, this is about us getting in those spaces and not yeah. doing it for us. He saw me. He was like, we need somebody to you know, run our media. He created a position for me and got me in there. So when I started getting in there, we used to talk about history all the time. Uh -huh. And we used to talk about how at Georgia State, have you guys ever heard of um, Alonzo Herndon before? Mm -hmm. One of the first, I think he's one of the first millionaires in America. Uh -huh. So when you look at Auburn Avenue, that was like his stomping grounds. Okay. Atlanta Life Insurance Company made uh -huh. millions. Black man. Nobody talks about that. The uh -huh. Georgia State Honors College building was his office building. And there's nothing talking about that except for a little plaque on a step that you walk over. And wow. it's off in the corner. Yeah. This man is one of the first millionaires ever. And he was a black man. And it's right here on Georgia State's campus, which graduates the most black people in America. And it's across the street from the Auburn Research Library for African Americans. Mm -hmm. And nobody talks nobody about talks this. About and nobody talks about how he built a company from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And this was like in the early 1900s. He owned barbershops, everything. So... Where um, Adderhold is? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. He had barbershops lined up over there. Wow. All black owned. What? Nobody talks about this. Damn. So 1906, uh, we had um, a race riot right where like Adderhold was. Uh -huh. It happened because they were jealous about how much money all the black people were making. What? Nobody tells you that. John Wesley Dobbs, another one. Mm -hmm. We see yep. like the mm -hmm. road names. Mm -hmm. Moneymaker. Yep. We have so many. Auburn Avenue, they said, was arguably more lucrative than Harlem at the time. Nobody talks about Not that. Not to mention that's where Dr. King grew up, too. And his family had money. <laughs> yeah. Nobody you know, talks yeah. about that. <laughs> and John Wesley Dobbs was the grandfather of Maynard Jackson, who was the first mayor. Mm -hmm. How do you think Maynard grew up in such an affluent community uh -huh, yeah. because of what his grandfather did? And we're talking about late 1800s, early 1900s. So Tulsa, Black Wall Street, we have yeah. these examples. It's just we don't know our history, so we think that we yeah, don't yeah. come from anything. Right. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like we tap into our history. Again, if we just have conversations just like this, everybody's smart. So yeah. We'll be good. Yeah. We'll and, be good. And I think me and Neil, we talk about this a, a lot. Like when you're in elementary school, middle school, like these history books, they're not really telling you. Mm -mm. They're not telling you the truth. Not they're doing all. what they're supposed to do. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Malik, Nia, think about this. If I told y'all that there was multiple black millionaires in the early 1900s, and if we had this in history books, and mm -hmm. I told you about Madam C.J. Walker, mm -hmm. like all these amazing people, you'd be like, so if they started business with no social media, mm -hmm. think about that. Madam yeah. C.J. Walker was doing door-to-door -door sales right. and had saleswomen. Right. No social media. She's keeping up with the mm -hmm. money, the sales, right. all that stuff. And we have social media now. But we don't know like who came before us. All we know is Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln, he freed us. 
bam. Right. And we're here. Freedom. Freedom. Free. Right. Yeah. So if mm-hmm. if we just learn our history, if we just again, I'm telling y'all, and, and it's not to be, you know, uh redundant, but it simply just takes conversations uh-huh. and going on social media. Just follow young entrepreneurs. Right. Watch podcasts. Have these conversations. I mean, right now, y'all even being in the studio, my man who's filming, he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. And that's why when I was saying, yo, like, what equipment are you guys using? Right. I was yeah. like, talk to him. Conversation. Yeah. yeah. So it just takes being humble and talk to your grandparents. Like, nobody thinks about that. Our yeah. grandparents' grandparents' parents were slaves. Mm-hmm. You can learn so much from them. Yeah. So just ask. Oof. Just ask oh. questions. Uh-uh. Not to, oh, and just to throw this out here, yeah. there's only 15 black billionaires right now. As 15. 15. How many saying. white do you know? I don't even know. Probably, Probably double. Blow, blow them out. Yeah. 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 But that's another thing. I feel like our black billionaires, some do a lot, but most don't do enough. Not yeah. enough. Because imagine if, all right, so that's $15 billion. Uh-huh. Imagine if y'all leverage that towards the community. And mm, I'm not talking about. True. Donations. Donations. Yeah, 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 donations, yeah, yeah, donations, donations, donations. In the words of Dr. Umar, donations. donations. <laughs> you only gave me ten dollars, but <laughs> it's it's not that, and that's another thing. Like it doesn't like philanthropy isn't needed anymore. Mm-hmm. We have so many black organizations. Right. We have so many boys and girls clubs, mm-hmm. but you do yeah. it because it's easy. easy. Yeah, because I remember uh, Carnegie or one of them. He once said that he was going to build parks and music halls because people would think about that when they think of his name instead of thinking about like his poor working yeah. uh, conditions for employees. Mm-hmm. Rich people do that on purpose because then with Oprah, we can say, well, she gives Morehouse money. And right. my thing is if Nip and, and I'm going to say this till the day I die if Nip was able to do all that he did with like Vector 90 Marathon Store as uh-huh. you saw when he was murdered that day he was putting one of his boys on who had a felony mm-hmm. he was putting him on bro yep. he was gonna get him a good job yeah. at his store again creating jobs if Nip did all that Nip was probably worth like a few million uh-huh. then Oprah needs to do 10 times more Yeah, mm-hmm. Robert Smith like great job with the student loans things right. uh-huh. but it doesn't stop right there right. Yeah. keep it coming and create actual programs feed into creating black media platforms yeah. right. like nobody thinks about black media that creates Ooh, so uh, many yeah. jobs so many like Nia, which you're a production company on their talent uh editors uh-huh. cameramen camera women lighting crew uh-huh. like bro, all that that's yeah, five that's, jobs that's right there yeah. photographer True. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but we don't i think that sometimes we like being the only one in the room yeah, yeah. and if if i tell nia how i edit stuff or if i tell malik how i do stuff or I don't want to tell him because then he's going to be better than me. Right. Right. I don't care, yeah, man. Right. Like, y'all mm-hmm. can ask me anything. As you see, I'm asking y'all stuff because I right. want to learn. Mm-hmm. Any person who ever has DM me, I make sure I respond to every email, text message. Because we got to help each other. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. those billionaires, no disrespect. And I'll say this to Oprah's face. Like, you can do way more. Way yeah. more. Like, bro, your show was filmed in Chicago. Why is Chicago number one in gun right. violence? Mm-hmm. You can change that overnight. Mm-hmm. So, that's Just how I like feel. like that. It's real. Yep. So I know you didn't already dropped a couple names, uh, books and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But do you have any more like any suggestions, content suggestions for people to learn about starting their own business? Yeah, really. I'll say this: I'm not. When I tore my um, Achilles, like back in December, I was bored, so I had to read. Yeah. Because I was bored. Like you get yeah. tired of watching Netflix. Yeah. So I was reading, but I would say you learn more from watching videos. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like with reading, like you have to tell yourself, okay, a few more pages today, <laughs> twenty more, <laughs> or you start dozing off, or, or, or somebody texts you, and then you get lost in your phone. Yeah. yeah. And it's not our faults because reading is boring. Like most people try to say, if you want to be a millionaire, you have to read this many books. No, because you have to apply that information. Mm -hmm. It's just like being in school. I can read something all day. When the test comes, brain goes blank. Right. So I would say, man, just watch videos. Watch podcasts like Earn Your Leisure. Um, Google Dr. Boyce Watkins. I love him, man, where he breaks down finances all the time in a very simple manner. Because in books, they'll start speaking certain things that we don't even know what they're talking about. So uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins. Um, check him out for real uh dr claude anderson again um earn your leisure i love that podcast so just tune in to podcasts watch videos and find dope people on instagram like Mm -hmm. people overthink this yeah Yeah. Yeah. find some people on instagram like it's a guy who i follow um him 500 it's hm 500 and he talks about credit every day or uh david shans uh sleep is for suckers where he talks about selling t-shirts like you can learn whatever you want to learn and it's all on social media but i feel like we we want to look cool and say oh i read this book yeah. i don't like to read like after i was done reading uh mindset of success i was done reading because i almost fell asleep like it was a great book yeah. it was like 300 pages 
And towards page 150, I was like, okay, I get it. Y'all just it. Right. <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. But then it keeps going and going and going. Right, so yeah. we got to stop trying to look cool. We got to stop trying to think, oh, if I post this on Instagram, people, they'll think I'm smart. Right. Just scroll on Instagram, find somebody who you like, go on YouTube, and you can learn so much more from hearing somebody talk than just reading it. So, yeah. Dope. Dope, dope. All right. So, Caleb, just drop some gems for us. We're going to go trying. over into I'm crunch trying. time. I'm We're going to. Switch it up a little bit, make it a little fun. Let's so, crunch time. All right, guys, we are back with crunch time with Caleb and Caleb. We we just been we've been to hit you with some hard hitting questions. Let's all right, it. that's Let's that's all it. I'm gonna say. Let's do it. I'm gonna hit you with it first. So, you know Netflix, they they've been dropping these these uh, black shows lately. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna ask you. I'm, I got three. I got three for you. Which okay. one? Which one you taking? You taking Moesha? Sister, sister. Mm, that's some classics. Or the Parkers. Mm. All right. That's <laughs> tough. Because really, the Parkers is cool and all, but that's something that you watch when it's like late at night. So mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> look at, look at <laughs> the Parkers is Don't hilarious. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love them. But yeah. it's just like Moesha, I, Sister, Moesha. Sister. I feel yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but real. But growing up in... It's crazy because we starting to get old. For I remember real. ABC Family before Freeform. Oh, right. Yeah. Why did Growing they do up, that? They used to no, play Sister they Sister. They the bag. Bro, big time. <laughs> they used to play Family Matters and Sister Sister. All bro, the they used time. to play it in the morning, yep. in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and bro, in the summertime? Yeah. Yep. Marathon every day. Every boom, day. Boom. Every day. I love Moesha to death. Yeah. Respect to Brandy, but Sister Sister, bro. Because they got so many yeah. episodes. Yeah. What? Yeah. And you've seen their growth. Right. From exactly. when they were like yeah. young, young to mm-hmm. them in college. In college. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. saying. Like, yeah. bro, the script writing was amazing. Great. It was great. Sister Sister, bro. Okay. Number one. I like that. I, I like that. It. All right, Caleb. So I saw this on Instagram the other day. Mm-hmm. Which R&B star would you want to sing at your wedding? Usher, John Legend, Neo, Miguel, or Frank Ocean. All right, all of them legends in their own rights. Neo, nah, I, I love Neo. Songwriter <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. better nah, as a songwriter. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Legend, he'll be doing too much like too yodeling. Much. Yeah, all that. <laughs> Usher has been my guy ever since I was a kid. Yeah, man. like growing up, you want to get like that a my guy. <laughs> Play that Usher in like elementary school, middle school. Usher by far, man. I'm Atlanta Zone too. Gotta do. Gotta it. go with Usher. I like right. that. Got Good to. choice. Good Got choice. Like that. Good choice. He has way more classics too. <sighs> People be sleep on Usher. I'd be for like, bro, you can reason, sing, man. I don't know why. Don't <laughs> you can just sing whatever, bro. You got it. Surprise me, bro. That's All hilarious. Right. <sighs> Let me think. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just put you on the spot. Let's right. So we talked about this earlier. Yeah. Please tell the people why you have the Mavs and Six. Why are you making it sound like I'm crazy? Bro? <laughs> the series is tied. Y'all think about this, right? And I was laughing. Nia Slick panicked when LA <laughs> lost to Portland. I did. I saw it in your store. <laughs> Dark room. <laughs> she's you like, she, hey, she's I panic. Talk, if they talking. don't change, if they don't change. <laughs> right. I'm like, all right, bet. We're going to see the same energy game too. Bro, everybody knows I'm like a huge Brian fan. Yeah. They lost phone blowing up. And yeah. I was telling people, right, you got to understand, and it's the same way with the Mavs. Guys who got the sauce, like you saw it um, on the last dance, Jordan let Reggie get some games. True. And what he say <laughs> with a cigar in his mouth with the back? All right. He still talk <laughs> when the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> Or if it's tied in the fourth, oh, I respect crazy, you. Because right. he said you could talk big after one game being right. up by eight. Yeah. And that's my thing with uh, the Clippers. You got to, and y'all know this from, from playing sports, you got to respect the game. Mm-hmm. The Clippers, yes, they have more talent. But if I did a podcast and only film once a, once every three months, but y'all film once a week or even biweekly, right. your content is going to be way mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. Because from each experience, you learn what to fix, what you like the most, yeah. how to refine it, how to clean it up. Right. It's the same thing with basketball. Yeah. Basketball is such a beautiful sport that it's all about timing. Like, yeah. if, if I'm making a cut, you'll know that I'm about to make that cut because mm-hmm. we play, like, at least 65 games yeah. together. Yeah. But if we only play 14 and Paul George mm-hmm. only gets me nine points, right? I got I got Luka, bro, because, like, nobody's stopping him right yeah. now. Like, yeah. isn't he getting, like, 30-plus? He getting 30-plus <laughs> yeah. every and, and Mind game. y'all, this is supposed to be a very defensive right. team. They're not looking they that way. They don't look defensive and at all. again, if they did this without Chris Stapps, like, I feel like they hadn't even played together this whole series. Yeah, Chris Stapps ejected game one. Game two, they go in. Buckets. Mm-hmm. Game three, no KP again. Yeah, true. Win. So, Man. if they had KP, that's another 20 points on the scoreboard. Right. So, I'm telling y'all, Mavs and six. Mavs and okay. six. Because Paul George, playoff P, he's right. That is playoff P. Or mm-hmm. somebody said uh, playoff P. Wee. That's who he is, bro. <laughs> Pandemic, <laughs> P. Pandemic, <laughs> P. Pandemic P. Pandemic P. Pandemic P. Pandemic P. Nine point. Bro, let 
Bron scored nine points, but Bron's ten points was different because yeah, right. Bron scoring ten points is just different. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah. it's it's super hard to it explain. Mean, it more. It's yeah. just anymore. different. Like yeah. he yeah. impacts the game. Paul George is a pure scorer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if playoff Pee Wee or pandemic P, if <laughs> if you only give me single digit points, you're not doing bro, that's that. That's not even an even number. Yeah. So that means that some of those came from the free throw. Right. Line, exactly. Bro. Yeah. So it was like two right. for like twelve or something like bro. Two, so y'all four. trying to tell me, man, that y'all trust them? I don't. I just I feel don't. like they're gonna get it together. We've been saying that every time. You're right. We said it, yeah. But but yeah. Malik, here's why. It'll be different if they played the majority of the season together. True. Toronto was different because they played together. Yeah, yeah. With the Clippers, PG taking games off, yeah. Kawhi mm-hmm. taking games yeah. off, Lou Will taking games off. A short season Everybody's like this. on load management. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bro, True. you gotta respect the game. True. Mavs and yeah. six, True. man. Okay. When like it happens, this, like y'all this. need to play this, bro. Mavs and six. <laughs> oh, I'm playing. No, we're going to cut it up. Bro, for real. Gonna cut this up. Those are for real. Mavs and six. I'm telling you, man. All right now. Luca getting buckets. <laughs> All right now. That's a bad white boy. <laughs> for real. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. What is your, um, what's your hot take on who is going to be the NBA Finals champ this year? Man, it's no hot take. We already know what the vibes are. Okay. Right. Ronnie Brown. Okay. LA. Bro, once okay. Brown gets his fourth chip, it'll be with three different teams. Go discussions over with. Yeah. It is. True. Because I've always said this because as a kid before I loved Brown, Kobe was my first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that was like my first love of like a pro athlete. Right. And I felt like Kobe surpassed Mike. Uh-huh. Because right. if we look at it, Kobe had his first chip at 22. I mean, right. yeah. Mike didn't get his first at, what, 27? Mm-hmm. And Kobe was coming out the West. True. Mm-hmm. Nobody yeah, talks tough. about that. He hey. went to four straight finals tough. and almost four. Bro, do you know how crazy that sounds to say almost four peated that by 25? Tough. Right. That's crazy. And I went five for seven in the finals, and I had to play way better competition. Yeah. No knock on Mike. But think about Kobe. He had to get through San Antonio, uh-huh. through Phoenix, yeah. through Portland when they had Scottie Pippen, yeah. Stoudemire, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grant. Like, bro, they just had squads. And then the finals, bro, like you saw the Pistons. Like, Kobe went through so much. And I felt like Bron went through so much yeah. that we can't really count rings. Like, of course, it takes a certain amount of yeah, rings right but we got to look at their their level of competition uh-huh. yeah. what kobe was doing like people forget in 2010 kobe had been in the league since 96 yeah and went back to back Bron, same thing so if Bron gets this bro i don't want to hear that nothing <laughs> that's it <laughs> all right that's caleb's take that's it that's man. caleb's take Four chips. To it. <laughs> Four chips. and he going back to back Oh shoot! Are okay. oh, you like doing that? It's not for okay. real. I promise you, Brian. <laughs> Brian might even finish with six because I feel like if they go back to back, he's gonna make that push. He got what he got. Two. So year seventeen is this year. Year eighteen, he's still gonna be the same because it's yeah, pretty much year eighteen now. Yeah. yeah. And then year nineteen, mm. I can give it to him. But year Man. nineteen, I really feel like he's gonna be a real point guard. He'll probably average yeah. at least like twelve. This is gonna be per eighty game. team if eighty. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure eighty will resign, but they'll be good. Yeah, they'll yeah. be straight. Yeah, yeah. and everybody want to come to L. A. You feel me? That's why I went to LA. Yeah, man. Tell him. Okay. Don't sleep. Don't All right. Sleep. Well, don't panic either, Nia. Don't panic. If they lose one game, <laughs> don't panic. Be in the I, dark room. No, 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 no. <laughs> if they don't change, Here's the thing. it's over. Here's the thing. I wasn't even panicking. It's the hey, fact you just that, like, the facts. it's the fact that. It wasn't looking pretty. It wasn't. Because I'm like, that was yo, scary, what though. is going on flex. with the Lakers? Up like, by what, six or eight with a few minutes man. to go? It's and dangerous. Dame, Dame was dancing on them. And that's what I'm saying. Bro, he started doing it's like, 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 you know exactly, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He's upset. He's coming for yeah. blood. Ooh, and I'm man. like, y'all could play around with any other team. Except if for that boy. Sixers, oh, you know, with, with Memphis, you, if, if they got in. You know, Phoenix, right. but you're not playing with the Blazers. That's the best eight seed ever, bro. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, they're not, not hard. supposed to be an eight seed. Mm-hmm. That's the they best probably best a five seed. or a four. Yeah, no. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. OKC okay, is an eight seed. They it should like, be three. I'm gonna be yeah. honest. They, I don't think they should have got that game last. But Come Nia, you yeah. were right though. Yeah, like, you can't play around. I was like scared. That. Yeah, but I trust Bron. It's just it's scary when you see an AC pop yeah. off yes. in game one. Exactly. I knew Bron wasn't gonna go down too well anyway. I knew there was Paul no. Pierce mad right now, man. Yeah, oh yeah, Paul Pierce. Like, hater. No more goat talking. Losing hater. series. All right, he bet. is a hater. Bet. Please bet. shut up. Right before we walk you back. Before we walk you back. To the bathroom. And Kendrick Perkins. Do doing on himself, man. Literally, get him out of here. Get him out of here. But that's crunch time, y'all. We're about to wrap up this episode. Stay tuned. All right, y'all. We are going to wrap it up today. Kicking it with Caleb. Caleb, man. 
motivational, inspirational, all this. Yo. I appreciate y'all. I, I, I knew it was I coming. I appreciate y'all. Drop Thank down. you. I love it. Man. I love this yeah. show, man. Thank y'all. It was fun. Yeah. Caleb, where can everyone follow you on Instagram? Yeah. Where they can uh, follow through Millie? Mm -hmm. um, how all we can that. watch you? Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. Um, if you guys can, follow uh, my personal page at Mind of Solomon. So that's M I N D O F Solomon. Uh, 3 milli at 3 milli pod 3 m i 2 l's i pod um, YouTube uh, 3 milli uh, productions check us out subscribe y'all can tune in on Instagram uh, we're trying to start filming again but you know how COVID be right. trying to get people to come in right. so yeah so um, in the meantime just check us out I'm on Instagram uh, Millennial Masterclass Series Instagram Live you can tune in anytime it will be posted on YouTube so yeah instagram youtube all that good stuff yeah thank you so, thank, Caleb, thank, thank, thank you for coming through Real. thank, thank you for dropping i appreciate y'all yeah yes. yeah and you know we'll, we're definitely have a part two yeah. for sure. hey you, anytime, you gotta come back Bro, <laughs> anytime i'm telling y'all i'm only a phone call or a text that's right anytime that's for right. real i appreciate y'all that's right. respect thanks yeah. for coming through it's going up thank y'all hey that's episode 15 y'all y'all already so know the drill Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at in the clutch pod. That is I in clutch pod. <laughs> I am Nia Simone. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Nia on air. And I am Malik Brown. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Malik ATL. Y'all, episode 15. Caleb. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. We out, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>